Today on The Joy of Editing, let's explore the magic of the parametric oil paint filter in Photoshop Beta. Did you know it was there? Well, we're going to check it out today. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Cully. Today I want to take a look at the parametric oil paint filter found in Photoshop Beta. Now there's a bunch of parametric filters there. If you didn't know about them, they're pretty cool. But today, it's the oil paint filter. Now where do you find these parametric filters? Well, if you come up here to filter, and you'll come down and you'll notice right here, parametric filters. Click on that and that'll open up your parametric filters. And then you'll find in here a bunch of different parametric filters in here. And they're all kind of cool, and I've played around with some of them, not all of them, but the one I'm most interested in, at least at this point, is the oil paint filter right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it, and you'll notice I get something that looks pretty horrendous. Today I'm working on one of my flower images and I find that I've been getting the best results if I work on 8-bit images. And it's easy to turn this into an 8-bit image and I'll show you how I do that in a minute. But first let's play around with the 16-bit image. By the way, these parametric filter images are smart objects so you can go back here and change these at any time that you want. Now, you'll notice up here under resolution, it defaults at medium. This is a drop down. If we look here, you can have different resolutions like draft, medium. Again, this is by default high and ultra. I recommend that you start out with medium and work on the image. And then when you're done, you could change it to high or ultra, but it'll be quicker in draft or medium. But I do recommend medium because it looks better. These parametric filters are not the quickest filters in the world, but they do render out faster in draft or medium. And remember, these are beta filters that could all change in the future. And now you'll notice here we have properties and we have presets. Right now we're on the default preset. If we click here, this is a drop down. There's a preset for soften, directional painting and sketching. I added one called 16-bit starting point, which you can have. I will link this preset in the description below that you can load into here if you want to play around with 16-bit uh, images. And let me go ahead and click on my 16-bit starting point. And you'll notice right away, it looks a lot better. Now there's a bunch of sliders here and I will go over all of these. But before I do that, I'm going to convert this into 8-bit because I can show you how this works better. Because again, I like to use this in 8-bit. I've been getting the best results with 8-bit files. Now, how do you get this 16-bit starting point preset into your oil paint filter? You see right here, this arrow pointing down. Click this and click import presets. Now, you can delete presets here, export a selected preset, export all presets, or import presets. Just click on import presets and then point your file browser to where that preset lives and just click on it and click open and that's all you need to do. Mine's already in there so I'll click cancel, but that's easy. And if you ever wanna save one of your presets, just click the plus button and give it a name, click create and tell it where you want it to go in your file system on your computer. For now, I'm going to click cancel. Now you know how to load up my 16-bit starting point if you want to try that out. I'll come back here to presets and click the drop down and let's set this back to default. And now it looks really ugly, right? Now check this out. I'm gonna come up here to image in the Photoshop menu, click on image and come to mode. This is where you can change an image from 16-bit to 8-bit or 32-bit. So right now it's on 16-bit. I'll click on 8 bits per channel. And now that preset will run again. And now look how much better it looks, right? It looks like an oil painting. Now I'm going to show you how all these different sliders work and what they do. But first, let's check out some other presets. So I'm going to click the drop down And let me start out with Soften. Let's see what Soften looks like. It looks like that. And now let's check out the directional painting. And there's your directional painting. And you can see the strokes are moving around in different directions. And now let's check out the last one called Sketch. I'll click on Sketch. And, you know, I don't know why they call this Sketch because it never looks like a sketch to me. I guess you might see some sketchy look right down in here. I don't know, but they're calling that Sketch. And again, these are in beta still. Under Presets, we have, see where it says Random Seed? 
randomize. We can randomize the painting right here, and this is pretty cool. I'm not going to show you that right away, but first we're going to work on the different strokes here. In case you're wondering what my 16-bit starting point looks like, let me go ahead and click on it and see what it does. As you can see, not much change happens to the image because I had to really pull back on the effects when it was in 16-bit. So it doesn't work out on an 8-bit image. So let me go back and change this back. We'll start with default. And as you start working with this filter, it's a good idea to save out different presets that you like. Stay tuned till the end of this video because I'll show you two other images that I use this filter on. By the way, if you're enjoying my YouTube channel, please like, share, subscribe, and comment. This really helps my channel to grow. And when you do that, I really appreciate it. Let's jump into the sliders now. We'll start out with effect intensity. Now, whenever I make an adjustment, it takes about three seconds to render out. I don't make you wait for that. I just cut the video during that part. But bear in mind, every adjustment I make, it's about a three second lag before it kicks in. And that time could vary depending on your computer and your processor speed and graphics card and all that stuff. Let me go ahead and drag effect intensity back and see what it does. Okay, we're starting to see a little more detail in this flower. It's kind of like an opacity adjustment, but maybe not quite. Let's pull it back a little bit more. Okay, and I think we're off to a pretty good start here. So that's effect intensity. Let's see what happens if I take it the whole way back. Okay, we're back to the original image. So it is pretty much like an opacity adjustment. Let me pull it back to like... 0.5 and I think that looks pretty good we're gonna start with that next up fine details now what's this all about now remember we started out with the default preset so we default here at 0.5 let me go ahead and drag this the whole way to the right we should get a lot more detail in here and if you'll notice this flower right here we see a lot more detail in the flower but I think that's too much so let's go ahead and pull this back a little bit and that looks better I'm gonna go back even more and I think I like it right here, so let's leave it here. And now let's check out Strokes Global Scale Multiplier. Now, what the heck is that? Now, the best way I think we can understand this, if we look below here, we have stroke size. We have X and Y. X is horizontal stroke size. Y is vertical stroke size. And then we have highlight stroke size, midtone stroke size, shadows, and then background stroke size. So when you adjust the strokes global scale multiplier, it takes into effect all the different stroke sizes and will make them all larger to the right or smaller when you move it to the left. Let me start out by moving this to the right over to right about here. And now notice all the strokes have increased in size. These numbers don't change down here. However, everything is increasing in size. And now if I go to the left of one, now you can see the strokes got smaller and you can see that little graininess in there. Do you see that in there? So I don't like that. So I'm going to drag this to the right. See that graininess is starting to go away. I'm going to go a little bit more. And I think right there, almost back to where I started out at one. So you can make them larger or smaller, depending if you go to the right or left. Now we come to stroke size. So we can go and work on the horizontal size of the stroke. Look at this stroke like right here. I'm gonna drag this to the left and it should get smaller. Yeah, see how they really pulled in? Now let me drag it to the right. See how they're getting wider? I'm gonna make them a little bit shorter by moving it a little bit more to the left. So look at this stroke. Yeah, see how it's gotten shorter? But you know what, I like that when I move it to a one where they get wider. I just think it looks good with this painting. I like the uh, abstractness of it. So I'm gonna keep this one at one. Now let's go here to Y, which would be the vertical. So now if you look right here, I'm gonna drag this the whole way over to the right and watch how this goes up higher here. This whole, stro all these strokes will get higher up and bigger. So let me go ahead and drag this to the right. You see how everything just shifted up and got larger? And now when I go back to where it was, I'm just going to do a command or control Z to go back a step. And that's a tip for you. If you make an adjustment and you want to go back, use the shortcut command or control Z. But you know what? I think I do like the Y right there. Let me see if I go just a little bit bigger, maybe like that. So I'll increase that a little bit in size. Let me show you something else. Okay, so right now I'm at a point forty-one that I like. But if I take this and drag it, further to the left. Notice now I get that more wispy fill in there, that more directional look, because I've shortened the height of those strokes vertically. 
But now if I do a Command or Control Z and go back, you can see the strokes have widened out vertically. So lots of room for experimentation here. And now we come to highlights, stroke size. So look at light areas. Let me pull this back a good ways. See how all the light tone strokes got smaller? You can see some graininess in here. And now let me drag it back over to the right a good bit to right there. Let me even go the whole way where it was to one. That was, I believe, the default setting. Yeah, and I do like that the best. That will adjust the highlight stroke size. And next we come to the mid-tone stroke size. So let me go ahead and increase this the whole way to the right and see what we get. So now that's just dealing with mid-tones. Those strokes are getting a lot bigger. So you can see we can get some pretty cool effects here. I'm going to do a Command or Control Z and go back. And now I'll drag the slider more to the left and those mid-tone strokes get smaller like that and you see that graininess starts coming in there but let me do another command or control z and go back to there because i do like that and now we have shadow strokes so if i drag this to the right we can see those shadow strokes should increase and now you'll notice the shadow strokes have gotten a lot larger and now I'll drag this slider over to the left and we'll decrease the stroke size and now they're a lot smaller in size and if you look up in here you can see the change in here so let me take this over to the right. Now, by the way, you can just click on here. You don't have to drag. I can just like click right here and see the effect. And okay, I'm gonna say I like that right there. Now we come to background stroke size. Now I never see much of a change here. Let me drag this the whole way to the right and notice if you see a difference. I don't really see a difference. Let me do a Command Z to get it back to where it was. See, nothing has happened. Let me take it the whole way to the left. In other words, I'll shut it off. And if I shut it off, I don't see a difference. So let me do a command or control Z again to get it back. So I don't really get much of a difference here. Maybe on certain images you'll see more, but of everything I've tried so far, I don't really see much of a change with the background stroke size at all. Now, I'm pretty satisfied with this painting. So what I would do next is come up here to randomize and let's click randomize. And you're gonna see this zero change to a different number here. Now, I don't know where they're getting these what they call random seeds. So let me click this and notice the image. See how it changes? And I really like that a lot. I'm getting a lot of wispiness to this. Now that looks really cool. Now remember the little trick, Command or Control Z to go back a step. To go forward a step, it would be Shift Command or Control Z and you'll step ahead. I'll click Randomize again. There's another one. Let me go again. I'll click Randomize and see what we get. And I kind of like that too. Now, if I wanted to go back two steps, I could go Command or Control Z, Command or Control Z. And this is the one that I really like. So I'm going to leave it here. Now, once you're satisfied with your result, this is where you can come back up to resolution and click on the drop down and let's click on high resolution. So there's high resolution. And now let's go and click on ultra resolution. And that's ultra resolution. And so I think I'll leave it here on ultra resolution. And so to shut this panel, just click on this button right here. And by the way, the button above it opens up your parametric filters. I'll click this again to close it. And now I have two examples to show you that I ran the oil paint filter on. Here's the first example, which is just the stock image. Now let me go ahead and show you what it looks like with the oil paint filter. It looks like this. So I really like the way that one turned out. And I have one more for you, and that is this one right here. Another stock image of a lion. And here's what it looks like with the oil paint filter. And again, I really like the way this one turned out. Now, for all three of these images, I did convert them into 8-bit. But don't forget, I have that download link for you. It's a Dropbox download link. You can get my preset if you want to try this out on 16-bit images. I think that preset will give you a good starting point. Well, there it is, everyone. And I hope you try out this new parametric oil paint filter found in Photoshop Beta. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.